Hi, I have a fully mas uh, multifaceted question, if you don't mind, if that's all right with you guys. Um, so like a fourth dimensional question. Exactly. <laughs> We're still only in 3D, though. Well, that's part of my question. Do you have any plans um, beyond 3D for a more immersive experience, such as um, virtual reality or anything along those lines. Um, the second part of my question is, do you think that video games are cheapening the 3D experience? The, or, which are cheapening? Uh, video games? Oh, video, yeah. Right, and then three, how does this partnership affect Avatar 2 pre-production and how do, how do I get cast? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, uh, I mean, I don't think video games are, are, are cheapening 3D. I think that video games and 3D go together like peas and carrots, you know, and I think that obviously gamers are going to be early adopters of these sets. Again, there's a content gap, and the issue, uh, I'm sure you're in the game community, uh, is that, you know, a good game takes two years. Whereas a pretty good TV show can be done in a few weeks. So the games are slower to fill that gap. But the 3D games that, that I've played look so promising. And I, I'm not somebody who sits in, in games for, for eight hours straight, but, but uh, that sense of immersion uh, is great. And you mentioned virtual reality. I mean, the way Avatar was produced was basically a form of VR. Really, we were working in a, in a virtual production environment. It has its place, um, and uh, it's, it's it's you know to me, VR has more more relevance to uh, to the to gaming mentality than the um, than than uh, you know the exhibition or the display of narrative storytelling. Uh, that's just my own my own personal feeling. I think you're always going to have narrative storytelling, and then you're going to have interactive media where you control it and you can operate it. And, and VR is that you move around within it. Uh, and of course, all of that should be stereoscopic. If it's supposed to be reality, it better be stereoscopic because that's how we see reality. And I think part of your question is about you know what's sort of next after 3D. You know, I think what we're going to see is 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 consolidation around the idea of 3D because 3D itself is not is not you know, fully established across across all platforms yet. You know, we're still in the early days of 3D. It's well established in in theatrical cinema. It's not well established in in uh, in you know broadcast cable et, et cetera, uh, mobile. Uh, but it will be over the next few years. And I think also 3D was kind of the last bastion, the last holdout of our of the way our sensory. Um, uh, the way we're made up in terms of our sensory system. You know, we see in color, we see in 3D, we hear stereophonically. All of these things took time, you know. Uh, first it was black and white, then sound, then sound came. That made a lot of sense. Uh, then color came, and then widescreen to fill more of our peripheral field of view, so we experienced the movie more like real life. And it kept, uh, uh, you know, our, our uh, movie and broadcast media kept coming closer and closer to how our human sensory system operates. Well, we're pretty much out of senses at this point other than smell, and I don't know if I necessarily want to smell half the things I see in a movie. Uh, I think people experimented with that and it, and it went away for a good reason. Uh, and the other thing is kinesthetic motion, and people are experimenting with what they call 4D, which is hot seats, mo you know, moving seats, and so on. Um, and, you know, that may have an application for certain types of films, but I don't think you're going to see the kind of broad adoption of that that that, uh, that you would for 3D because 3D is basic it's fundamental you know it, it's it's a it's a fundamental aspect of, of the way we perceive the world um, you know every every animal has a minimum of two eyes you don't see one-eyed animals you don't even see one-eyed insects for the most part uh, what you see is uh, what you see is stereoscopic vision and we have that for a reason our brains are wired around the idea of stereoscopic vision so to me that's like the last great thing uh, and, and after that, it's going to be nuances. It's going to be variance and improvements, like frame rate and getting projection, you know, sh uh, uh, getting uh, screens, uh, home screens, higher resolved, getting rid of the glasses, letting, uh, in, in the home, letting people have five or six or seven viewing angles on a 60-inch monitor without having to wear the glasses at all. That's all coming. Let's say within, I'm, I'm told, anywhere from three to five-year horizon on that. Uh, so it's going to be incremental improvements in uh, in 3D, but none of it obviates what we're doing with respect to the Cameron Pace Group uh, in terms of creating these production solutions and and, uh, and content creation uh, hardware and software. It'll it'll flow right flow right to the to those screens just in a, in a more and more improved way.